This game is rated M and is intended for mature audiences. Watch that actually be her robot's, like, code phrase. I'm running with this robot theory. <laughs> I think at least one of the girls is a robot. Or either that or we, the main character, are a robot. Habits are persistent, Banes. Even when your circumstances change, they tend to stay with you. Take meal times, for example. I eat at 7 in the morning, 12 in the afternoon, and 7 in the evening. If you know the time, you know how full my stomach is. My sleep patterns are even easier to understand. Unless I'm working or have something to do, my eyelids naturally grow heavy after 10 p.m., and I'm asleep by 11 p.m. at the latest. Even if I don't set an alarm, my eyes open on their own every morning, and usually find the clock reading 4.45 a.m. After spending 15 minutes half asleep in bed, I slowly rouse myself and apply the eye drops I keep cool in the refrigerator. Next, I drink a bottle of Oolong tea, replenishing the fluids I lost for sweating in my sleep. A quick check of the weather outside my window, and I change into my sweats and head out for my daily run. These are more rules than habits for me at this point. Today, as usual, I alternated jogging with wind sprints, uh, responding to the echo of the drill instructor's whistle inside my head. Yeah, he, he was in the army, for sure. But at this very moment, outside my empty dorm room, a far-from-routine incident was beginning to take shape. I was heading back to my room after my run, planning on a quick shower and some breakfast when I noticed something unusual. Suamine was skillfully moving her slippered feet down the stairs, careful not to make even the slightest sound. Your shirts, your pants aren't up all the way. You, you didn't zip them up or complete the belt. They're like two inches too low, lady. The instant I saw her movements, precisely those of an agent of an, on an infiltration mission, I instinctively hid myself in the shadows. I'm now watching her every move. What is with the main character and stalking people? Suo Amine. That woman. Could it be? There's a cold, sticky sweat on my forehead, and it's not the product of my daily exercise. Am I her target? Amine's holding a key in her right hand. Glancing cautiously around her surroundings, she moves to my door. She takes great care to unlock it with a gradual, silent movement. What is she doing? Why is she breaking into my room? This is creepy. Just as I thought, it's my room. Is she going to get? Is she going to undress herself again? She better not. I consult my watch. It's still early morning. There's only one reason to sneak quietly into a man's room at this hour. Assassination. I don't want to believe it. I don't want to believe that Suomine is an agent working for some unknown organization. But now that I think back, there were a lot of feints that didn't make sense. She was aggressively friendly to me from our very first meeting, never showing a hint of embarrassment at pushing herself onto me, and yet she's never showed any particular interest in my past. Just how convenient is that for me? Her lack of interest in my past makes sense if she'd already received an overview of my background. At a glance, she's just your typical horny big sister role player, but that could be a front hiding a killing machine. A woman who takes the lives as naturally she draws breath. That would make Amine a way more interesting and cool character. <laughs> Okay, this is a this is a reason right now where, yeah, you should stalk her. Just because she's breaking into your room and you're like, what is she doing? That I can get. I hadn't read her that way. But that's probably because I let my guard down. Unbelievably sloppy. If my master was alive, she'd knock me on my ass for this one. A convenient woman like that is obviously too good to be true. But even as I reproach myself, my chest is burning with bitter sadness. Oblivious to my silent regret, Amine eases my door open and begins to inch her way inside. Okay, I don't think she's trying to kill us if she's saying good morning. Amine speaks in a whisper, probably a safeguard against the possibility that I'd awoken earlier than she expected. When there's no response, she continues to move into the room. I quietly follow, concealing myself in the shadows to avoid alerting her to my presence. Um... Was she planning on having her way with us? Because if so, that is all kinds of effed. Of course, she finds my bed empty. Amine looks around the room quickly, but after a moment opens the door to my bathroom and pokes her head in to continue her search. What exactly was she planning to say if I had been taking a shower? Okay, yeah, that, that's, that's effed. Say what? Wait a second. Suo Amine. Did you seriously sneak in here for that idiotic? No, hold on. Could she have noticed my presence? Is this all just a masterful farce? Suo Amine, you're one hell of a woman. 
Very well. Let's see just how long you can keep up this little act. It's fine. It's tidy. It's minimalist. Mind your own business. I'm working on it at my own pace. They're going in the laundry later anyway. And I was going to finish that after my run, okay? Okay, so she broke into our room, planning on having her way with us, but now that we're not here, she's going to clean it up. Don't think that makes it better. She's finally ready to lay her trap. Or not. Omni picks up the bottle, she starts to gather my scattered clothes from the floor. Don't sniff his clothes, what the heck. For some reason, Amine unfolds the clothes right in front of her face, buries her nose into them, and begins inhaling their scent. That's a big mistake. You are very lucky if the clothes only smell like detergent, especially if they're dirty. Suo Amine, are you a dog? Oh, Amine. Or rather... A bitch in heat? Are you a pervert, Suomine? Hey, what now? Why are you staring at my bed? Wait, you. Don't tell me. Hiya yourself! Did you seriously just jump onto my bed? Ugh. And now she's pressing her face into my sheets and snuffling loudly. Oh, brother. Don't stick your face in my bed! Don't shake your ass around! Don't stick your face in my bed and shake your ass around! This girl really is a dog in human form. I'm amazed she got her donkey in this room, though. That's pretty impressive. If you press your nose against the covers and inhale over and over, of course you're going to get lightheaded from a lack of oxygen. More importantly, is this what I think it is? If I'm reading this correctly... Oh, no. This is so dumb. This woman is, in fact, a horny big sister role player. Yeah, we're not making a noise. As of right now, Yuji's literally just watching this happen, which is also like, no, no, no. This is the point where you're like, what the heck are you doing in my room? Allow me to correct myself. This woman is, in fact, a sex-crazed maniac, big sister role player. <sighs> Drunk on the man stink that's apparently lingering in my bedsheets, Amine wriggles her body, breathing roughly through her nose. But watching her shameful display, I feel more relieved than anything else. At the very least, there's no assassin this stupid. Now that I think about this over calmly, there's no way anyone would arrange such an elaborate assassination for me. A traffic accident would be much more economical, and the cleanup after is so much less troublesome. <sighs> All that suddenly ridiculous tension I'd been filled with leaks out of my mouth. At this point, I finally notice that I'm very thirsty. Moving relatively quietly, I open the door to my fridge and retrieve a large bottle of sports drink. <laughs> Non-brand name-specific sports drink. I twist the cap off and drink directly from the bottle, gulping down a mouthful of cold liquid. As the chill soaks into my parched throat, as the electrolytes course through my strained body, I realize just how worked up I'd been over nothing. How does she not know we're here? We literally just opened our fridge and drank the sports drink right in front of her. Within her fantasy, I've apparently begun to reach my hand towards Amine's underwear. She's very concerned about this for some unclear reason. At this rate, I'm going to get a real show free of charge. What to do? Maybe the gentlemanly thing to do would be go back outside and then noisily pretend to return. Nah, uh She broke into our room and now is pleasuring herself in here. Nah, we, we embarrass her. With that thought, I start to return my drink to the fridge, but just as I separate my mouth from the two-liter bottle, the liquid inside sloshes around vigorously, making a surprisingly loud sound. Unfortunately, that sound shatters Amine's delusion just as she's begun a slow, inviting wiggling of her hips. She sprints up out of the bed, her eyes wide open. Nice to meet you. There's no time to hide. I'm standing there with a sports drink in my head, staring at Amine, and she's staring right back. For a while now. 
あのだからそれっていつからなのかなどのあたりから見てた If I honestly tell Amine that I saw the whole thing, she might be hurt. Maybe I should be considerate and tell her that I didn't see anything. But at this point, it would be way too barefaced to lie. So the middle ground would be to say I only saw the last part? Hmm, let's see. I think it was, ah, uh, you can't, Yuji kun, or maybe, stop, restrain yourself. <laughs> hmm? What's wrong? You're sweating like crazy. You want some of the sports drink? I already took a swig, just so you know. <laughs> Is. Mm, I don't know. Is breaking into the dude's room to have your way with him also kind of m messed up? Why? Should I have Sana Son to help you get in the mood? Her legs buckling underneath her, Amine drops to the floor of a flood, covers her face with both hands, and then breaks down in hysterical tears. Look. I am the one who should be screaming here. Coming back to your room to find a woman wriggling around in your sheets? I don't remember learning an appropriate response to this particular scenario. He is a robot! He needs to program all of his responses to every possible situation. <laughs> well, don't worry, Amine. There will still be people who want you. <laughs> Look on the bright side. At least you noticed me before you started rubbing my pillow between your legs, right? <laughs> hey, Amine! Amine pushes past me and runs away screaming, still hiding her face in her hands. Although from the state of her ears, I can infer that it's bright red. What am I supposed to do with this woman? Buy more stronger locks for your room and keep them locked at all times. It's hardly that big of a deal. But apparently I'm the only one who thinks so. A good hour later, it's time to go to school, but Amine's locked herself in her bathroom and shows no signs of emerging. That sounds about right. I think Amine is a lot of people's favorite girl. I think I'm in the minority where I absolutely do not like her in the slightest. Oi, Amane! <laughs> no, Makina. Everything hurts. That's... oh. <laughs> Danny Donkey, I need to use the bathroom! <laughs> Hi, Vasa. <laughs> yeah, I'll let her be alone. <laughs> okay, so now we've got some debate in the chat. Goris says that Yumiko is the best girl. Hi, by the way, Goris. <laughs> I am... Nah, Sachi's still best. Although, Michiru is second. And Michiru's, Michiru's gaining! <laughs> I could see her becoming my favorite after a while. Or at least best. I don't know. <sighs> Makina, you're not helping! <laughs> no, she's just suffering from chronic embarrassment. It, uh, it happens. Makina, no. Well, the exact details aren't any of my business, but... It seems that Makina's persistent siege eventually convinced Amine to leave the bathroom. <laughs> Funny how that happens. <laughs> it's okay, we'll just call BD Joe to drive us there. Don't be too harsh, Amine has her reasons. Wow, how is Makina like the most immature person here? <laughs> that doesn't seem right. Don't worry about it. This is almost my fault in a way. <laughs> no! <laughs> no! <laughs> oh, Makina, let me tell you all about it. I'll tell you when you're a little older <laughs> That was the That was the perfect response. That was literally the perfect response. You can practically see the question mark floating over Makina's head as she tries to get a grasp on the situation. Meanwhile, Amine seems to be trying to get through this by force of will alone. The three of us leave the dorm and begin to run toward our classroom. 
What's wrong, Makina? You're falling behind! Run! Alright then, Makina. I'll teach you a wonderful song that makes running more enjoyable. <laughs> it's a small world after all. It's called a running cadence. At my old school, we sung these all the time when we had to run. Repeat after me. Got it? Uh, oh, do I have to sing that? <laughs> do I have to sing that? <laughs> I don't even know what tune to do. Suwamane's a bitch in heat. And she's actually singing along, of course. Rolling around in a man's bed sheets. <laughs> wow. This is a great panel. We've got Yuji's just like, yeah, this is happening. Makina, who's just oblivious and happily singing. And then Amine, who is basically wishing for the ground to swallow her up right about now. This is too perfect. Good for you. Good for you. I forgot that Makina speaks English occasionally. Good for me! Good for me! Mmm, good! <laughs> and that's how the whole world learned of, Ma of Amine's big mistake. Hmm. Well then, shall we take a leisurely walk and sing some nice nursery rhymes instead? <laughs> oh, man. Although I'd been considerately trying to turn the whole incident into a joke so that we could laugh it off together, things didn't wrap up that neatly. Makina enjoyed the cadence more than I'd expected. And when she got Sachi to join in a loud chorus during P.E. class that day, our classmates naturally started asking about the lyrics. Amine's response was to hang her head deeply and vaguely mumble, <laughs> I don't even care anymore. The smile on her face at that moment was truly hollow. <laughs> and that's why you don't do creepy things in other people's rooms! The moment I leave my room, I'm met with a shrill voice from the lobby. Well, that describes about half of the characters in this game. Uh-oh. That's true. <laughs> From what I can gather, Michiru is trying to drag Sakaki into some sort of group event. So, do those two dislike each other one after all? I ask Amine, who's watching the fight from the sidelines, to clear up a point of confusion. They have very different personalities. Yeah, exactly. I see. Michiru tries to bring Fanes together as everyone's leader, while Sakaki avoids excessive contact with those around her. It's only natural that these two would come into conflict pretty frequently. Wow! Yumiko, you really need to stop bringing that box cutter with you everywhere. Yeah, you are. Hmm, what? Oh, what? What is with this? <laughs> Yumiko the Cobra versus Michiru the Bear. I feel like I feel like Michiru would not have a bear as her main animal motif. Hmm. Judging from the way she isn't backing down even with that box cutter in her face, Michiru's gotten a little heated herself. Shouldn't we stop this? <laughs> Makina would be the girl who would be like, fight, fight, fight! Maybe not. I look down to find Makina hiding between Amine's back, watching for the scene fearfully. <sighs> if you want, I can try to calm them down. <laughs> oh, 
A demon lord? <laughs> Sachi... <laughs> Sachi is the kind of character that you really don't want to make her angry. Because she would just destroy you beyond belief. You guess it's a mongoose? Mongooses eat cobras, and it's insane. <laughs> and so the fearsome demon lord, or rather, Sachi, slowly advances toward her prey. You crazy? Sachi's obviously not cut out for this role. <laughs> oh no, you don't mess with Sachi. No offense to Sachi, but when it comes to stopping an argument, I think you'd be, you'd be more effective, Amine. <laughs> Sachi just walks up to them. Who wants hot dogs? And then gives them out. There's a precedent? Oh, it's time for another big flashback. <laughs> Note how they never ask Makina. I don't know what Makina would be able to do. She pulled it off? <laughs> Literally, she pulled out a gun and fired it. This is a little hard to swallow, honestly. Seeing is believing, is it? <laughs> Crackle. あまねさんにお願いされ <laughs> <laughs> I like the now scared expressions on the snake in the bear's face. <laughs> Yay! Happy animals! <laughs> okay, I have a feeling that, like, Sachi did pull a gun out last time. What the hell is that? She just asked them, and she did a crappy job of it. It's because Sachi has the cute factor. True, the wind has completely gone out of Michiru and Sakaki's sails. <laughs> I, I want to see that sprite, actually. <laughs> I see. So this is the nature of her demonic powers. Hey, Michiru. Seeking further details, I capture Michiru as she totters away from the scene. Oh, I thought we were making the <laughs> face at her. <laughs> Why did you stop arguing just now? <laughs> Sachi has dirt on both of them. Sachi has a serious mode? I've heard if looks could kill, at least. I, I desperately want to see that sprite on Sachi. In other words, when Sachi needs to, she can fire a glare powerful enough to kill. I think we've seen a trace of that. Michiru continues to mumble to herself as she sits down on a nearby sofa. Sakaki, for her part, is unusually pale in the face. That's fair. So it seems. Sachi 
さっちゃんの分かりましたは私たちにとって問題の解決とイコールなの You really place a lot of trust in Sachi's abilities. So, Nano, yo. Jitsua, Okora, Seruto, Ichiban, Koino, and Sachin, come, she and I. No, Sachi, it's just Sachi. <laughs> Sachi would be the character who, like, it would take so much to make her legitimately mad, but if, if, if you got, if you made her mad, like, God help you. Hmm. It seems like I may have been underestimating Sachi. Hey, Sachi. Hi. There's more to you than meets the eye. That was pretty impressive. Board game tournament! Have fun. Don't worry about the noise. I'm the type who can sleep next to the train tracks. No! You, you gotta participate. Board games are amazing. What? Okay, well, it depends on the game. Because if it's like, guess what? We're playing Candyland! It's like, okay, well, that, that's just luck. But if it's like, guys, we are playing Ticket to Ride, it's like, oh, you better buckle up. Dominion's actually the best, though. <laughs> Board game tournaments at this school would be very interesting, though. Hmm. They've been going at it like cats and dogs just moments ago, but all of a sudden it's an utterly united front. Might be a little late in the game to realize it, but I seem to have ended in a pretty troublesome school. Wait, we don't get to see them playing board games? What, what is going on? Oh, she's dying her hair. I was like, is she in chemistry lab or something? It would be interesting to see Michiru without her blonde hair. <laughs> Her natural hair color is green. Um, what is going on? Although it's not uncommon to hear someone who acts in a bizarre, stupid way derided as a space alien, as a general rule, the aliens I've seen in movies possess advanced intelligence surpassing humanities. In some, they're even depicted as virtual gods, manipulating genetic sequences to control human evolution. Do aliens exist? If you ask scientific authorities on the subject, they'll tell you, in all likelihood, yes. But just as the children's eyes begin to sparkle, the scientists tack on a malicious afternoon, not that they're anything like what you're thinking. Even if we do find some alien water flea wriggling around on a distant planet, I can't imagine it'll inspire too passionate a response from the general public. The people don't want to rip off like that for their E.T. What they want is a simple, by-the-book, alien. Jeez. Although I've experienced a wide range of auditory stimuli in my time, this is quite the ear-splitting shriek. There's considerable distance between me and the source, so there's no damage to my eardrums. But if I had to approach, I'd need to prepare myself a pretty decent set of earmuffs. Compared to the 120 decibels produced by the engine of a civilian aircraft, this is no match in pure volume. But when you consider the sheer unpleasantness factor, it's a pretty competitive match. Yeah, that's what I've noticed in this game. Again? Might explain what's going on. What is she doing when she dyes her hair? How long is a while? Several days? Weeks? What exactly is that woman doing, other than shrieking like a banshee? <sighs> uh, 
I think she's more likely to be a robot. That's interesting. It keeps it keeps making them talk even if you advance to the next text. At least if the next text doesn't have another dialogue that's played. Communicating with the stars, eh? I see. Plausible. That woman is definitely a little out of the ordinary. I don't think you should necessarily talk. Hmm? I'm somewhat interested in the nature of the ceremony. Let's take a look. <laughs> take a look in a book. Reading me, Chiru. Like that? Like what, exactly? I see. Then I'll do just that. As I approach Michiru's room, I notice a strange scent in the air. Stench. This is foul. Some kind of gas? <laughs> Would I turn on the gas if my pal Rocky was in here? The membranes of my nose twitch in response. My body recalls the tension it's known in the field. I was trained to retain the capacity for action in a cloud of tear gas, but... The irrepressible coughing and running nose, the pain in your eyes, and the irritation of your skin will always lower your effectiveness. This... what... what were you doing before you came here? No, my mistake. This isn't gas. I thought it might have been dispersed pepper spray, but that just seems to have been a misjudgment. The odor is terrible, but it's not dense enough to affect my... I don't think dyeing your hair is supposed to be painful. What are you doing? What's this? The ceremony Makina was talking about? It hurts? What's that supposed to mean? The ceremony. Don't tell me it involves human sacrifice! When you think of human sacrifice, the Mayan civilization is what comes to mind. In order to offer tribute to the god of the sun, it's said that they would paint a, a human being blue and gouge out their still beating heart. But ceremonies like that should have been ancient history by now, and in the first place, we're in Japan here, you know. It's hard to believe, but if Michiru happens to have painted her body blue, then it's bingo. What? She's emerged? I immediately tumble my way across the hall with a skillful shoulder roll, hide myself in the shadows, and then silence the sound of my breath. <laughs> what are you doing? What is going on? Is in this moment, I know fear. Not the fear of death or the fear of darkness. This is, in fact, a variety of terror completely new to me. To explain its nature concisely, wh what the hell is that? Michiru's body was not, in fact, dyed blue, which is all well and good, but... Rolls of clean wrap are draped all around her head. From inside, a mysterious sap drips out in globs. Just as Makina said, Michiru's eerie, irregular movements are reminiscent of a space alien. This must be the particular variety of terror that accompanies a close encounter of the third kind. If I'm discovered, all bets are off. It's that sort of fear. I have never dyed my hair before? Um, I don't think dyeing your hair is supposed to be like that, though. Michiru wanders around the hallway with vacant eyes. Her cries are truly bizarre. Is she receiving a message? Or could that shriek itself be her transmission to the stars? <laughs> what? <laughs> All of a sudden, it becomes a rhythm game! <laughs> Whoever voices Michiru, they did a great job. I know her voice can be really shrill and kind of annoying, but she also makes some very funny sounds. Michiru draws near. Her lips are trembling violently, and her eyes seem to have rolled back in her head. She passes my hiding place and wanders off somewhere. It's been a long time since I wish so desperately from the bottom of my heart. Please don't find me. She's left a slimy trail behind her, like a slug. I thought she was nothing more than a Sundere wannabe. To think she'd conduct such a mysterious ritual. Clearly, I need to handle her with more caution. <laughs> hmm, if it isn't Sakaki, let me ask you instead. What are you doing standing up like that? As for me, I was just taking evasive action in response to a certain crisis. 
<laughs> Michiru voice soundboard. <laughs> that would be a very interesting soundboard. Kiki? So, I stand up, brushing off the dust from my clothes that picked up during my roll across the floor. Incidentally, what are your thoughts on extraterrestrial life? I know it's a difficult question, but I want to organize my own thoughts on the matter. Please let me hear your opinion. Sakaki answers my sudden question without hesitation. So, what? A battle for survival, huh? Sometimes there's no room by, for any other choice. And there's an old saying, the first blow is half the battle. I see where you're going with this. I thought you hated scary stories. Novel? Oh, you were talking about a book. I see. My bad. Hmm, crawling, is it? True, the low crawl they teach every SDF grunt is a method of advancing with your body pressed flat on the ground, so it's not surprising you'd see it that way. But I didn't advance even a single meter now, did I? Your powers of observation are still lacking, Sakaki Yumiko, my friend. That is what we call the prone position. <laughs> no, Sachi, don't worry about it. Oh, it's Sachi. What, were you listening? Sachi's anxious expression suggests that she took my conversation with Sakaki completely seriously. I'd say that depends on the contents of Michiru's reports. If she really is sending transmissions into space, their contents will decide our fate. <laughs> it's okay. A lot of people think that at first. Humankind ravages nature and slaughters innocent animals to eat their corpses. If the aliens learn of our savage ways, we won't get off easy. Oh, please. If you want, we can go watch the crucial moment together. I still have no idea why Michiru is acting like this. There, you see? Hey, careful! Get any closer and you'll be in danger. Listen, observe with caution. Can you see how her eyes have rolled back? Probably a sign that she's under the control of the mothership. <laughs> Not in a good way. Well, it's only a hypothesis for the moment. She may well be fighting with someone in the spirit world, but in the end, we're merely spectators. We can do nothing but watch over her battle. Sachi, you are way too trusting and naive. Then again, we can also interpret this in a very different way. That's a dance. At a glimpse, it may look like she's going into convulsions, but there's also the possibility that she's simply working on her moves. <laughs> if you think of it as a modern dance expressing her inner self, I'd say this is actually pretty spot on. <laughs> it's better than most modern dances. Amane didn't pick up those cooking skills in a day, either. Expertise is the result of hidden dedication to your craft. In other words, Michiru is sowing the seeds here and now for the future flowering of artistic accomplishment. <laughs> oh man, the effects in this game are so good. 
ねえ二人で仲良く何してるのシッキープクワイエッ今ミチル様のダンスの練習を見学していたところですダンスどれどれああなんだいつものあれじゃないまたやってるのね I'm pretty sh I still don't know why she's acting like this but it's clear she just finished dyeing her hair Doesn't it just bring a tear to your eye? Ma, ma, so it was so, ne? That's fair, Amane. Don't you understand the magnificence of those movements? Those steps express the terror of an invasion from outer space. Truly avant garde. Avant garde. Philistine, to think your fragility would extend to the fine arts as well. Oh, really? What a sad human being. Can't even appreciate this work of art. Or whatever it is, since I'm basically just making stuff up here. <laughs> yeah, this face of Sachi's, I think, is like the entrance to her super serious face. Okay, we bored yet? I see. You're passionate. I'm bored. Frankly, I got bored about two minutes in. Good work. If you observe any dramatic changes with Michiru, make sure you report them to me. As I'm leaving, it occurs to me that Michiru's movements are also similar to those of a zombie. If that woman is in fact one of the undead, I suppose I'll have to put a bullet in her head. Compared to walking the earth as the living dead, I'm sure she would want it that way. Oh, 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 oh. 